Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you the last React file input you'll ever need. And I know that's a really bold statement to make, but I'm going to try my best to back those claims up in the video. So let's take a look at how it looks and how it works under the hood. Okay, so this is the component we're going to build. That's the file input, as you can possibly tell. And it's looking really good and it has a lot of functionality. This is inside of an open source project I'm currently building that allows you to generate all descriptions for your images um, completely for free. However, before we dive into the code, I want to show you how this works. So I prepared um, three files on my desktop. And first one, let's just drag it in here. That works perfectly. And there's a bunch of information that we can take a look at with this component. So there's a preview of the image, there's the name obviously, the size of it, and then a status bar. And now I'm going to upload another image and pay attention to the status bar. Um, so I'm going to upload a larger image and the status bar takes a bit to um, load because we are actually mocking an API delay by one or two seconds, I believe. So that's why it takes a bit. And if we try to upload an image that is too large, we get a toast notification and a red status bar indicating that it didn't work. So this is really neat and the image upload action can be handled however you want. So this is not opinionated at all. You can handle this um, in your API route. However, there's one limit enforced by Next.js being that the API route has a maximum body size of 4 megabytes due to the nature of edge functions having to be fast. Um, if you want to exceed that with larger images, which you probably won't, but if you do, then you would have to host your own server, something like, uh, you know, Node.js. Okay, now let's take a look at the interesting parts, and those are the preview, the size and the status bar. I think is probably the most interesting part. The rest is kind of boring and simple. If you want, you can take a look at the code, but I'm not going to get into the styling at all. Okay, so let's take a look at how the preview is done. So um, to give you some context, the file input, this whole component right here, is being rendered in the page.tsx. This is inside of a Next.js 13 project. And then we go into the file input and we have a bunch of imports and stuff. And one very neat thing about this is that I've implemented a bunch of good practices. Um, for example, the reducer when we're trying to update state. So if I try to update or upload more than five images, let me show you what happens. Um, these still upload, but if I do one more, you can see too many files. You can only upload a maximum of five files at a time. And how that's done is through this reducer right here. So um, before updating the state in the reducer, we can actually handle logic and say, you know, if the, uh, if the current state plus what is about to be pushed into it is larger than five, we're going to toast an error and else we're actually going to um, set the state. That's why the reducer is really useful and it can also be extended with something like remove files from input if you want. However, I didn't bother with that. And then let's take a look at the drag, right? As you noticed, there's a drag and drop functionality with the editor. If we drag an image over it, it highlights and if we drop it, the image is uploaded and this works just fine with a click. However, that would open my files and then I don't want to show all my files. Um, however, um, the handle drag is what makes the drag work and the handle change is what makes the click work. So whenever we uh, receive a drag event, which we get by react, uh, by the way. So if you take a look at this on the form, we have on drag enter. That's a react method we can use to handle the drag. Um, then we're going to use this function, prevent the default and stop the propagation of the event. And then just um, update the state that handles the, um, the tailwind CSS logic conditionally. So we apply a bit of different styling when the drag is active and that's how that effect is achieved. Okay. Now let's take a look at the preview though. And then after the status bar, I think that's the most interesting part of it all. Um, so let's get into the preview first to show you how the preview works. Um, you need to understand that it's not being handled in this component for each input. So for each line of image, we are rendering one component that allows us to um, keep the status bar for each one instead of having them synced all together. That component is called image upload. And let's take a look at how the preview is generated inside of here. So whenever, um, one image gets pushed into the state. Remember, we're mapping over them. Another component of these is being created. So in each component, we know the actual file that is rendered because we're passing that as props up here. I call it image. And then we can um, do something called url.createObjectURL, essentially making a blob object that we can then render. And we also need to clean that up in the use effect. And then to upload the image, there's a custom hook called upload form. Um, and we are uploading that form 
or that image which we are appending to form data to this API route, allowing us to also track the progress. So we handle that logic in this user fact right here. Whenever this component gets rendered, then we upload the form with the form data and you can see the hook right here where Axios is doing something really nice. Um, and that is right here. We get the upload and download progress from Axios. And that's how the status bar works. So if I show you that again, uh, uh, let me upload one more file, one last time. Take a look at the status bar. You can see Axios is giving us the current progress. And if there is no progress, then we're just using 100 for 100%. So this hook abstracts a lot, a lot of the upload logic away from wherever we use it, which is really useful, making it very reusable across components. So whenever we want to upload images, we can use this hook and also get the progress. We get uh, if there is an error, which we do right here. And we also um, post a toast notification to the user. And that is all the logic there is to this component. We display this uh, the, the values in table format, which is just semantic HTML. You could display them however you want. And then last thing is the API route, which I uh, kind of mentioned earlier, where we have the body parser size limit. Um, it's the maximum that Next.js allows at four megabytes. And then we are awaiting the delay of 3000. If we didn't, or let me just comment that out, um, take a look at what happens to the status bar. So I lied, the previous image wasn't the last one. Take a look, it's really fast, it completes right like when we drag it in there and we cannot upload images that are too large which is really nice and then we can do whatever we want with the image on the api route in my case that's gonna be i'm generating the alt tag with a machine learning algorithm but you can do whatever you want oh and by the way if you're wondering about the size um we can take a look at how that is handled really quick and that is the image.size. So whenever you're working with a file, the file also has a dot size on it. Um, there's a bunch of properties. So there's a size, a name, last modified, type, uh, like image or GIF or whatever, uh, whatever you upload, essentially. Um, we're just working with a size, dividing that by 100 and then um, limiting that to no, no numbers after the comma. And that's how we get the size. And that's all there is to this drag and drop component. It works with a click, it works with um, drag and drop. It looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something from the walkthrough, how you can handle the image preview, how you can handle the status. That's all there is to it. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.